guys welcome back to Belle's Books I'm Carly and today I am doing a December book haul for you so it is today the 28th of December I hope you've all had a lovely Christmas if you celebrate Christmas um, the best that you could have in the circumstances I haven't filmed recently because um, we were actually um, under the threat of flood during Christmas so I live on a river very close to a river and it flooded um, a lot of the town that I live in is underwater and so we were worried on Christmas Day and Boxing Day that um, our house was going to flood so that was quite nerve-wracking but now the water has gone down a little bit um, so I'm a little bit calmer about it so I'm going to talk to you about the books that I got for Christmas which are many and I'm very happy, um, always very happy to get books as presents. They're my favourite kind of presents, obviously. Um, so I have uh, an Amazon wish list where I put all the books that I would like on and various other things. I also encourage people not to buy from Amazon, obviously. So when people are going to buy me books, I say, these are the books that I would like, but buy them from elsewhere, independent bookshops or anywhere that isn't Amazon. So I have a few books from my wish list. I have a few surprise books. The books I want to talk to you about first are the ones that I received for Yola Bokoflod, which is an Icelandic tradition um, that my lovely little group of uh, friends, the Widdishin Circle, which you may know of from previous videos that I've talked about, um, we do every year just send each other books and exchange them on Christmas Eve. Now the tradition, the Icelandic tradition of Yola Bokoflod is that you give books as Christmas presents on Christmas Eve and then you sit up and read your books for the rest of the evening, which sounds delightful. Um, I didn't actually do that. We, we did the present exchange over Zoom, obviously, because everything's over Zoom at the moment. Um, we're in tier four where I am. And uh, so we did our little present exchange, which was lovely and then I can't even remember what I did on Christmas Eve. I think me and Dan probably just watched telly, but I didn't end up reading any books because I was worried about the flood. So there are four books to talk to you about. One of them was a complete surprise. I've never heard of it. And it is The Gilda Stories by Jewel Gomez. I've never heard of this, but it sounds amazing. This was from my lovely friend, Annika. She got it spot on. This sounds like a mashup of, if I was doing book maths, this sounds like a mashup of uh, The Confessions of Franny Langton by Sarah Collins and Carmilla, which is an old uh, vampire, lesbian vampire novel, or the first le lesbian vampire novel, I think. So it is set in 1850s Louisiana. It is about a girl who escapes slavery and learns about freedom whilst working in a brothel see the Franny Langton comparison there and then she turns into a vampire and there's some uh female female romance from what I understand amazing sounds amazing I'm very excited to get to this and bonus points for Annika because I've never heard of it so yay well done <laughs> um the remaining three that I got for Yellow Bokka Flood I have heard of and two of them I've already read but uh, I received The Mercies uh, by Kieran Millwood Hargrave from my lovely friend Kat. Um, she was disappointed that I'd already read this, but I was like, don't be, because I have I read this, I listened to it on an audiobook at the beginning of the year. I loved it. I'm compiling my favourite books of the year list. This is on it. So I wanted a physical copy and I'm very glad that I got one. Um, so well done, Kat, because you got me a book that I, that I wanted to get. It doesn't matter that I've already read it. Also, it's signed. Love a signed book. So I'm very pleased that I have got a physical copy of this um, because it's one of those books being a favourite that I would like to reread. Um, when I listen to something on audio and I like it so much, I would I've put that by to I want to read this at some point in physical. So I'm pleased I've got a copy of that now. Then I got Lanny by Max Porter um, from my lovely friend Rachel. I have already got a copy of this. I have read this I've listened to this on audio um and it's another one that I like so much that I want to wanted to read so I did unfortunately buy myself a copy of this a while ago it sat on my shelf I haven't reread it yet because I wanted to see what it looks like on the page because it is 
a little bit experimental with the way that the text is presented on the page. It works very well on audio. If you haven't read it, please read it and I would recommend audiobook. Um, then from Holly, my best mate Holly, I received Mrs. De Winter by Susan Hill. Susan Hill, the classic uh, gothic spooky story writer. It's a sequel to Rebecca. Rebecca is my all time favourite book. Uh, by Daphne du Maurier and this is um, like an imagining of what happens to the second Mrs de Winter. Um, I think it's 10 years on after her and Maxim come back from their exile abroad. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know whether they come back to Mandley, I assume they do because it's like her dip battling again uh, with Rebecca and Danvers. So I'm very excited to read this. Well done Holly! Okay so those are my Yola Bokaflod books. Next, I'm going to talk about the books I got for Secret Santa. This year, I got two books from Secret Santa. We always guess afterwards. So we, we give our presents not knowing who got them. And then we always try and guess who got them. And I guessed my lovely friend Jess got me these two books. Um, she knows me very well. Also, these are on my Amazon wish list. This dear, is a non-fiction Dear Reader, The Comfort and Joy of Books by Kathy Rensenbrick. I've heard lots about this, lots of good things. Um, so I really wanted to to read this and it's a beautiful beautiful book and she put an inscription in it Merry Christmas lots of love from Santa if you can see that I like books with inscriptions so yeah this is just a book about books and the joy of reading which is my life so perfect well done Jessica and also <laughs> this is a bit weird I got a book about the Titanic it's not weird because just got I, it was on my wish list I wanted this I like I like learning about the Titanic like I, I love the film and I just find it in, so fascinating anything to do with Titanic so I put this on my wish list and it's basically excerpts I mean admittedly it's from the Daily Mail excerpts from the news when the Titanic sank so you've got like little parts from the newspaper about what they were saying about it um it's got pictures and I just find that stuff fascinating. I just really, I don't know, I know it's like morbid, but I just find it fascinating learning about the Titanic. So I'm very pleased I got this book about the Titanic. Also, the reason I put this on my wish list is because I love watching ASMR and one of my favourite ASMR channels is called Library of Whispers. I'll link her down below. She does whispered readings of various books and this was one of the, one of the books that she read. And um, I just loved it. So I wanted a copy of it. Um, and I'll link that video down below. It's, it's just lovely to listen to. If you would like some gentle soothing whispering. Right now. Um, so these are a mixture of books from Dan and my parents, I think. Um, so Dan got me this on my wish list again. A Kindred by Octavia Butler. Octavia Butler is one of those authors that I put on my list of authors I want to read this year. And I haven't got around to it, but this was the book that I really wanted to pick up. Um, so I'm pleased that I have a copy now. Um, and again, I think if quite a few people have been have read this this year. This is not a new novel, obviously it's quite old. Um, I don't know when it was published, but a long time ago. This is a kind of a time travel novel. So we have our protagonist, um, Dana, in 1976, and she time travels back to 1815, where she is assumed to be a slave and she has some the way that I understand it some kind of interaction with people white people that will be her family that are her ancestors and she has to help uh these white people who are slave owners I think that's what it's about um and I don't know whether she goes backwards and forwards between those two time periods but it just sounds fascinating so really wanted to read Octavia Butler and I wanted to read this one first. If you have any other recommendations of Octavia Butler novels, please drop them in the comments below. Then I got two witchy books. Witchy books are always my favourite. Uh, I got this from Dan. Um, it's The Green Witch, Complete Guide to Natural Magic of Herbs, Flowers, Essential Oils and More by Aaron Murphy Hiscock. Um, this is sectioned out into... Um, like introduction to green witchcraft which is what i am learning about and how i'm hoping to live <laughs> um enhancing your power attune yourself to nature already on that uh, so yeah it's just about walking the green path uh green witchcraft path how to create like herbal concoctions and things 
I grow a lot of herbs in my garden. I have a ton of lemon balm in my garden, so I'd like to know what to do with that other than making tea. Um, so yeah, this is just seems like a helpful guide of herbs. Look, witch hazel, um, elder, things that you can do with herbs and concoctions you can make. Um, so excited about getting to that. On the same vein, I have Moonology, um, working with the magic of lunar cycles. Um, by Yasmin Boland. This was recommended to me, I think, by Holly. Um, and again, it's just a guide for how to live your life in tune with the phases of the moon. Um, so another excellent one to work through in tandem with my Green Witch book. Okay, then I've got two kind of mythical retellings or feminist retellings so I've got Wake Siren, Ovid Resung by Nina McLaughlin. Now, from what I understand, this is about Ovid's metamorphosis, but from the perspective of the women in it, and it's like a feminist reclamation of uh, their stories because they get mentioned, but not in a good way. So I think she's just um, taking taking back those female characters and writing them from a woman's perspective. Um, but I really like the sound of this. So the last, I'll read you, a, I don't like doing uh, synopsis readings, but I'll do this last little bit. It says, drawing on the rhythm of epic poetry and alt rock, everyday speech and folk song, fireside whisperings and therapy sessions, Nina McLaughlin's Wake Siren recovers what is lost when the stories of women are told and translated by men, breathing new life into these fraught beloved tales amazing look at the cover though medusa she's badass and this was on my wish list but i love it when dan gets me a book that is not on my wish list but it's very me and he's done it with this this is a beautiful book and i've never seen it before it's warriors witches women mythology's fiercest females and it's just stunning so it's got some beautiful illustrations in here open right on Cersei um so it's got a little bit about each of the women from myth and then a little beautiful illustration I love it I love it so much um this I just really like the art style look mm. beautiful so I'm very excited to get to this one it's really exciting when you get a book that you've not heard of before that is right up your street okay then uh, from my parents, I got two more from my wish list. Um, the House of the Spirits um, by Isabel Allend. I don't know if that's how you say it. This is a classic. I think it's a classic. I don't know when it was published. I put, oh, it's translated from the Spanish by Magda Bogan. Um, okay, when was it published? In the 80s? It says, well, this says 1985. I don't know if that's when it was first published. Um, but this is a gothic novel, uh, spooky tales, and it's set in Latin America. So it is about our protagonist is uh, Clara, who has the ability to read fortunes and um, make objects move. And something happens to her sister and then she goes mute for like 10 years. And the first time she speaks again is to tell people that she's going to marry this dude. Um, he's some kind of rich landowner. And yeah, it's set over three generations. I love a family saga. I love anything spooky. It just sounds really mysterious. And I put this on my wish list after seeing it on someone else's channel who I've now forgotten. I think it might have been Sagey's um, at the Artisan Geek, but I'm not sure because... I know she talks a lot about translated uh, translated fiction, and I think it might have been her. But it just sounded right on my street, so I'm very excited to get to this. Bit of a chunker, but exciting. Um, and then I have Bitter Orange by Claire Fuller, also on my wish list. Again, I don't know much about this. I put it on ages ago after I read... Um, what was the other one that I read by Claire Fuller? About the daughter and the dad that go into the woods. Our Endless Numbers Days. Oh, that book messed me up. Really messed me up. Um, it was great, <laughs> but I was like traumatised afterwards. Um, so this is about Frances Jellicoe, 
who is dying and again it's two timelines i think so a vicar comes to her deathbed and wants to know what happened in the summer of 1969 when she was um says so she was tasked with surveying a dilapidated country house who, and there was a bohemian couple that lived there and she i get the feeling like she was spying on this couple she was mildly obsessed with them so it sounds like a, a book about uh, jealousy obsession intrigue that kind of thing the thing that got me is on the cover it says a latter day daphne de Maurier, a compulsive page turner well you know that I, i'm sold i want to know what's going on here um daphne de Maurier is one of my favorite authors so and i do find claire fuller's writing very um engaging and page turning and so I'm expecting to like this one. I hope it's not as traumatic as our endless number of days, <laughs> but probably will be. Um, so yes, exciting, gothic, scary books. And then a comedy one from my cousins. <laughs> my cousins, Kelly and Hedge. They got me a dictionary of the vulgar tongue <laughs> by Francis Gross, which is basically just a list of um, old time swears. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to, I should have got some funny ones. Some of them are quite like lame or like not really sweary. D uh, you know, almost a little bit like Cockney rhyme in slang. Bruiser, a boxer, one skilled in the art of boxing, also inferior workman. What? Um, and then you've got some, <laughs> I won't read them out, but there are some like rude ones. <laughs> This is just fun, fun to dip into. Also, me and Dan are going to try and learn some of these and then <laughs> use them as <laughs> terms to call each other by around the house. Um, so lots of fun in this one. Okay, I think that's all my Christmas books. I'm surrounded at the moment by all of my books because when the floodwaters came up and we had to prepare for the flood, I have three bookcases downstairs. So all of my books are in bags all about me because I had to bring up all of my books, bring up all my furniture. I've got loads of furniture upstairs that we still haven't put down. So everything is a mess at the moment. Um, but I think that is all my Christmas books that I have to talk to you about. Um, I'm going to be doing, I know I haven't done a wrap up for ages because I'm still trying to finish all the books that I started this year. It's not gonna happen. I'm desperately trying to finish The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern and Shirley by Charlotte Bronte and a poetry collection. I've just finished Wives and Daughters today and I'm going to do separate wrap-ups for those. I'm going to do my my much belated Victober wrap-up, my non-fiction November wrap-up and December wrap-up. So those are coming at you hopefully very soon and also my best books for 2020 which I'm putting together at the moment so um i hope you're all okay i hope you're not flooded um and speak to me in the comments below have you heard of any of these books do you want to read them have you read any of them talk to me in the comments and i'll see you in my next video bye guys <laughs>